Hey Care 2, it's Heather, and I wanted to introduce sort of a two-part series that we are launching this afternoon on our cause channels. We were able to sit down with the Environmental Defense Fund earlier this week. They have a fantastic new Google map that sort of maps out the American companies that are doing uh, that are producing and manufacturing sort of uh, products uh, and creating the green jobs that are going to hopefully help transform our economy uh, and help us get out of this recession. I was able to sit down with Jackie Roberts, who not only laid out uh, this fantastic new resource they have, which is at lesscarbonmorejobs.org, but also to talk about some of the challenges around climate change and the policy uh, fights that we're about to embark on here in Washington on Capitol Hill around uh, cap and trade. Well, that's actually one of the options which we'll talk extensively about. But how do we put a policy in place in the United States uh, that helps reverse and uh, decrease the emissions that we are producing uh, here? Since, as many of you know, the United States is responsible for one quarter of emissions worldwide, even though we represent far less than the population. So check out this two-parter. Part one is about mapping the green economy, and part two is about cap and trade as a policy option, and how do we get there? Hi, CARE2. I'm Heather Holdridge, as you know, uh, Director of Political Advocacy here at CARE2, and I'm sitting next to Jackie Roberts, who's the Director of Sustainable Technologies for the Environmental Defense Fund, a great nonprofit that we've done a lot of work with over the years. Now, we wanted to sit down with Jackie because uh, EDF has some interesting stuff going on, but Jackie, I would love it if you could just take a minute, since we work with so many environmental organizations, yes. to tell us a little bit about EDF and how you sort of fit into the broader environmental community. Sure. Um, environmental Defense Fund has been around since the late 1960s. It's a group that focuses on some of the issues that you would think about, oceans, um, climate change. We focus on a range of pollution issues, human health issues. But I think what really distinguishes EDF from other environmental organizations is we've always had a very strong markets focus. So how do we move America? How do we move corporate America? How do we change practices using market-based incentives? My interest is really how do you use business strategy to really persuade companies that they can change their practices, they can be more sustainable, really reduce their environmental footprint, mm -hmm. but at the same time do it in a way that's consistent with their business needs and is consistent with other needs of the community. Right after the election, there was a study that came out from Duke University Yes, that was sort of talking about and trying to define what are green jobs, which is fascinating to me because, you know, that's sort of the buzz phrase. Everyone's talking yes. about green jobs, but there's a challenge there, right, which is, okay, well, let's make sure green jobs are actually green. So what did that study say? How was it defining green jobs? And, and talk to me a little bit about EDF's uh, role in that. When I look at all the solutions that we need to implement to solve climate change, mm -hmm. it involves um, hundreds of solutions that all have supply chains. And these are the labor and the parts that go into these solutions. So one of those, a wind turbine, has over 8,000 different parts in a wind turbine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these are very familiar parts. They're bolts, they're generators, they're motors, they're wiring. And all of that takes work, takes labor, um, and involves jobs. And so what we wanted to do was tell that story for a range of climate solutions. Mm -hmm. So I looked at, um, we asked Duke, um, and it was a study that we sponsored with labor partners because labor also sees this opportunity and they've been great partners here. What we all saw was the ability to map out the value chains or supply chains mm -hmm. behind climate solutions and show where are these companies that are actually going to see the jobs and therefore where the green jobs are. So one of those just simple examples, a window. I mean, you think a window, how many parts go into a window? Right. Well, actually, there's over a dozen raw materials that go into a window. There's seven major components, and it's the obvious ones, like flat glass, which we make in places like Tennessee and Virginia. But then it's other things like industrial gases, because when you make an energy efficient window, you put several panes of glass together and you fill it with an insulating glass, a gas. Mm -hmm. So you have um, a layer inside, and those gases are made by companies in Pennsylvania and elsewhere. All of those parts have to come together, and then you have companies, of course, that put all those parts together and do the finished window. Mm -hmm. And then you have, um, like, Anderson windows or Marvin windows, we've all heard of those. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you have the retailers that are going to sell these. So all along the value chain, mm -hmm. there's value added and there are jobs. And that's the story we wanted to tell with um, the Duke step. Business as usual is not working. 
It's sending us both on a path where we are going to have major costs from not acting on climate change. These are very real financial costs mm -hmm. that come from storms and other issues that are going to happen. And we also have not done, I think, a very good job investing in our manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So we now have, I think, an opportunity that has been fully recognized by our president and vice president and the leadership that he has brought in to say we can not only solve and really reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, really try and make a difference on climate change very quickly, which we need to do. But in the process, this is a huge new market. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring lots of customers to lots of manufacturing businesses, and I think it's a real opportunity to revitalize manufacturing here. Mm -hmm. This week, the uh, Environmental Defense Fund has launched an interactive map, Yes, which is sort of mapping out where these green jobs are in various states around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as I understand it, you're sort of launching with data on a certain number a dozen of states, states, yes. dozen states, but you'll be expanding that over the next several weeks. That's our plan, right? to keep, yeah. ro keep rolling it out, keep adding to the sure. states. Yes. So talk a little yes. bit about this interactive map. We're going to show yep. it to folks. Uh, we are going to have a little, right. little, uh, little screenshot of that so you can see. And of course, we'll give you the URL so you can visit it yourself. So we had um, the supply chain studies I was just telling you about gave us lots of company names about where the jobs were and the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And we actually started initially just trying to gather all of these stories. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, you know, there's quite a bit here in the state. What happens if we put it on a Google map? And it was, it was awesome. It just, mm -hmm. all these dots popped up of companies. And so we very much turned that into a project where we wanted to map four states, all of the companies in those states that would grow under climate solutions. Mm -hmm. If we cap our greenhouse emissions, if we do policies like cap and trade, there will be a demand for all kinds of solutions that reduce greenhouse gases. Those are all going to drive customers to these companies. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the important thing to realize is while we've got some real success stories and bright spots that I can tell you about, most of these companies are struggling. Mm -hmm. The economic conditions today are tough in any event, but these are small companies that have wanted to move into the realm of green technology, but there hasn't been a lot of demand. I mean, we just haven't focused on this, and certainly, mm -hmm. you know, we've been um, living a life of quite a lot of consumption, and it mm -hmm. just has made it hard for some of these companies to really thrive, and so we want to see that change, mm -hmm. um, and so we felt like putting it on an accessible map was the best way to tell the story of all these companies. Uh, the president actually on his way to the inauguration visited a company in Ohio called Cardinal Fasteners, mm -hmm. and they make bolts. They don't make screws or anything else, they make big bolts. And a couple of years ago, they got a rush order from a new customer, and it turned out to be a wind turbine company, saying, we need a lot of these big bolts. Mm -hmm. And they figured out that they've got a whole new customer base for their bolts in the wind industry. Mm -hmm. And they have um, now are expecting their sales, even in this economic climate, to, to almost double in the next year because they're getting so many orders. Um, Gamesa is a great success story for Pennsylvania. It's a Spanish company who they attracted to come and put a plant right near, um, right in Philadelphia. And that plant has created a 1,000 new manufacturing jobs. It was put in an old U.S. steel industrial facility, so kind of you know rejuvenating some of these unused warehouse and unused factories around mm -hmm. the world. And they're, and they're building out a supply chain that includes companies in the U.S. and Pennsylvania. The vice president has been uh, put in charge of a, a middle-class task force, which was announced to great fanfare just even within a week of uh, President Obama yes. taking office. Um, and he's having his first meeting uh, this week in Philadelphia. Your, your CEO, Fred Krupp, will be making remarks to that. Tell me about sort of how that came about. Clearly, the administration sees the green jobs as sort of a fundamental pathway for middle class jobs in, in, yes. in America. I think one of the things um, that the administration really liked about some of the work that Duke had done was being able to map out the value chains and show that the jobs that we're talking about really go back to very familiar businesses throughout the country. This isn't you know, a Wall Street Silicon Valley story at all. It's very much about who are the companies that make all of these components that then go into, whether it's insulation or windows or new energy technology or you know, new transportation technology, all of these things um, take jobs. And so I think they were particularly interested in using um, some of this research to give people a real sense of the on-the-ground view of what are the companies out there that are going to benefit, what are the companies that are going to create the jobs. And so I think that's why we were invited to participate on the panel and um, tell that part of the story. Mm -hmm.